Hello, my name is Gene Greiner. I'm the senior sales engineer for the Mid-Atlantic States for Yaskawa Motion. I cover Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, and Metro New York. Coming to you as part of our video series called Hashtag Yaskawa at Home, I'm here in Southeast Pennsylvania, and like many of you, we're just beginning to come out of our COVID-19 restrictions. And so uh, we're working in our home offices and um, using this opportunity to reach out to you with information uh, about Yaskawa and our value proposition to the marketplace. You can search for hashtag Yaskawa at home and find a whole series of useful videos um, by other members of our sales team. I want to talk to you today about cost reduction through correct sizing. And uh, like any OEM or machine builder, you ideally want to reduce the cost of your machine without sacrificing performance. And one of the ways to do that is by correctly sizing the servo axes on your machine. As we consider servo sizing, one question you might want to ask is, how were the axes originally sized on your machine? Sometimes I hear questions like, no one answers like no one knows, or, well, the person that did it left the company. Sometimes it's been because you crossed the part numbers from one manufacturer over to another. Or there are times when you use what was in stock, either on your own floor or at the manufacturers. It's also good to ask questions about an existing machine, like have mechanics changed over time? Did the product that you're manufacturing change over time? Were there components that made up the assemblies redesigned at any point that and it might change their weight or other characteristics? Or were components substituted over time? Did purchasing uh, find another supplier for certain components? And while functionally they were the same, there might be certain characteristics that make them different and that may affect sizing. Also, it's good to ask the question, what information was originally used to size? So sometimes we make educated guesses. Oftentimes when we're brought in to help consult with a customer, about a new machine design, you may not know all the details. And so we make educated guesses that will make sure that we're covered and provide a servo axes or multiple axes that will do your application. But in the end, because we make educated guesses and we put safety factors in, we might find that axes are oversized for their application. And so this video is just to say that it's worth going back and asking those questions and revisiting the sizing of the axes as a possible way to cost reduce your machine. Now it's helpful that we know a couple things about how we serve a, how we size a servo axes. One piece of information we need is torque. That's the question asked of does the motor have enough oomph to move the app the application to move the machine? We need to know things like the mass of the components that we're moving, the dimensions. What are other loads in the system or is there any significant friction? We need to know speed. That's the cycle rate of your machine. How fast does your machine have to cycle or move? And then also, are there any limitations, particularly in the area of acceleration and deceleration? If we accelerate too quickly, could we tear material? Could we tip something over or spill some liquid? And then the third one that we, thing that we need to know is the inertia of the system. That's often not quite as intuitive for many of us. Inertia, if we go back to our high school physics class, says that a body in motion tends to stay in motion or a body at rest tends to stay at rest. That's the inertia of the system. So a high inertia system needs a lot of oomph to accelerate it, needs a lot of torque to get it moving. But once it gets moving during that acceleration path, it's hard to slow it down or change speeds to get it into a constant velocity profile. And so we talk about the inertia mismatch or ratio. That's the ratio of the inertia of the motor that you're using to the inertia of the load that it's trying to move. Now, a one-to-one -one inertia, where the load, of the, the load inertia equals the motor inertia, is ideal, and that's where the maximum power is transferred from one to the other but it's overkill and not necessary. 10 to one or less is very common. So many of our competitors 
many engineers for safety's sake will size their inertia so that it's not greater than 10 times that of the motor. Now with Yaskawa, we can often size to a 20 to one or a 30 to one inertia match because of the resolution of our encoders, the speed of our servo axes and the control loops that we're using, we're very confident in being able to size a motor with a higher inertia mismatch. So once we know all those three things, we can properly size an axis. So this is the axis we're gonna look at today. I've chosen a simple rotary table, and there are things that we need to know about a rotary table in order to size it. So for instance, if we wanna put a gear motor on this table to rotate it in our machine, we need to know physical characteristics. We need to know the diameter and the thickness. What material is the table made of? On these green blocks, I've put those on there to simulate some kind of tooling that's on the end. So every 90 degrees on this table, there's a, some tooling that will help to manufacture the parts that we're trying to make. And we need to know the weight of that tooling so that we can move it correctly. So over on the left here, I've given some information that we're going to assume, and I've compared what I'm calling budget information, and that's where we make educated guesses to what actually is on the machine. So for instance, in the diameter, I'm choosing a budget of 24 inches, diameter of the dial, when actually it ends up being 22 inches. The thickness, I'm using 5 eighths when the actual is half inch. For tooling, I'm assuming seven pounds per each tooling component, when actually it will end up being five pounds. The motion we'll use is the same. It's 90 degrees. We're gonna mo mo move that in one half second, and then we're gonna dwell for one second to allow the manufacturing process to take place at that tooling stop. So I'm gonna move over to Yaskawa's, what we call our Sigma Select software. I will put a link at the bottom of this uh, video to where you can download this software free of charge. And I'll put some other links of some information that might be helpful to you there. So Sigma Select helps us properly size a servo axis by plugging in the information that we've been discussing. So I've brought up a rotary table here. And you can see we have our load information where we've calculated the inertia of this table. And let's look at that for a moment. We click the calculator button and we can see that the table's made up of a cylinder that's up here at the top, one cylinder, and then four cubes that I've chosen to model the tooling. So for the cylinder, we have, we'll use 0.625, which is our budget, that's the thickness. We will use 24 inches, which is our budget diameter. And then for the tooling, we'll use four cubes, and we'll say that those cubes are seven pounds, that's our budget. And so when we do all this, we get an inertia of 12 inch pound second squared. I'm gonna put a 50 to one gearbox on there. We're not concerned about gearboxes in this video, although they are important, but we're gonna leave that constant for the moment. Then we have something called our profile. Here I've entered our move. I'm going to accelerate and move from stop to stop. That's 90 degrees. We're gonna do it in one half second. And then we have a one and a half second dwell. So that's our motion that will remain constant. Now in the Sigma Select, I'm gonna choose one series of motor to limit our choices. I've chosen a 200 volt system. And here we find a list of motors that are available to us. And in the software, it compares the torque of the motor to the torque that we need to move the load. It compares the speed of the motor to the speed with which we need to move the load. And then it compares the inertia and it gives an allowable inertia that we've chosen that is safe for that motor, and then the inertia mismatch or the inertia ratio that's excuse, actually calculated. And so 
where it's green, that's good. And so in this particular case, a 600 watt motor is the smallest motor that will do this application. That's what this 06 means. We go to motor details and we have a speed torque curve. So this is the, in green, we have the continuous rating of the motor. And in yellow, we have the peak torque of the motor. And we can see yellow is continuous RMS, red is peak. And we can see that those values comfortably fall within the continuous rating of the motor. We can see that our inertia mismatch is seven, but we're allowed to have 20 on this motor. So this is a very safe motor. Now this low, this size is a 600 watt motor, and that's based on all of our best guesses. Remember the PowerPoint list. But what happens when we put in accurate information? So we'll go back to our size, and for our first choice, we'll choose the diameter. We'll just change only two out of the three. We'll change our diameter, and we'll change our thickness. So somebody came along and designed that plate to be a half inch thick instead of 5 8, and it turned out we only needed 22 inches diameter instead of 24. So when we only change two, two values, let's go back to results. Now we can see torque and speed are good for all our motors, but look at our inertia mismatch. This is now allowing us to go down to a 400 watt motor because the reduced load gives me a reduced inertia mismatch. But look at the speed torque curve. Because the load has changed, my both my continuous and my peak ratings are still well within the continuous range of this motor. So moving to a 400 watt motor from a 600 watt motor, I don't sacrifice any performance, but I will reduce size and cost. Now let me go back to our PowerPoint. I've done this sizing for a range of uh, possibilities. Again, our budget figures, when we used our best guesses at sizing, we ended up with a 600 watt motor. If I correct just the thickness and the diameter of the plate, which we already did, I can reduce it to a 400 watt motor. If I correct the thickness or the tooling, weight, or if I correct the tooling weight and the diameter, any two parameters allow me to go down to a 400 watt motor. But when I correct all three, I can go down to a 200 watt motor. And let's look at that in the sizing. So we'll go back to the load profile. As soon as my mouse behaves for us, We'll go back to the load profile. We'll go back to the calculator. We'll go to our tooling. We'll correct that for five pounds. We'll go back to our disk, our dial, and we see that's already been corrected for five pounds, for half inch thick and 22 inches in diameter. So now if we go to our motor results, we can see that now not only can I go down to the 400 watt, it's allowing me to go down to the 200 watt. And let's look at the results. I'm still well within the inertia mismatch of that motor, and I have plenty of torque and speed. So just by going back and evaluating the mechanical system to make sure that the values that I've chosen are correct, I can go from a 600 watt motor to a 200 watt motor, and I'm not sacrificing any performance. You can see that my torques and my speeds are well within the continuous range of that motor. And what does that mean in cost? A 600 watt motor, if I use that as 100% of my cost, to go down to a 400 watt motor is 85% of my cost. So I've changed, I've saved 15%. If I go down to a 200 watt motor, it's 75% of my initial cost, and I've saved 25%.
So now if I have a multi-axis machine with four, six, 12 axes on it, and I go back and I reevaluate my sizing to make sure that the values I've used are correct, I have the potential of reducing the cost of my machine 10, 15, 25%. Now with modern 3D CAD, most OEMs are, are designing their machines in 3D CAD. And those CAD programs do something for us. At the point where the motor connects to the load, almost all of those programs can actually calculate the real moment of inertia for me at that motor shaft. So when I go back to my sizing software, instead of having to put in the mechanics like I did, the 3D software will just give me a value that I can plug in for rotating an inertia. And then I'll get a highly accurate representation of the load and I'll know exactly what I need. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Consider resizing your, your axes to reduce cost. Give your local Yaskawa sales engineer a call and we'd be glad to help you work through this. We have engineers available that can help you redesign, help you recalculate what you're using. We'd love to be a part of consulting with you to help you reduce costs. So thank you again, and I hope you're all safe in this COVID world.